What you need, God's got it, my God's got it, God's got what you need, God's got, my God's got it, God's got what you need. place of worship one more time. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise God from whom blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him
I'm called to worship. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is the holy temple, let all the earth keep signs before me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I will sing to the Lord this song, the the Lord Hymn of praise will be hymn number 347. Hymn number 347. I'm pressing on the upward way. Pressing on the upward way, new heights are gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Without any further line, let us all sing together. Hymn number 347, I'm pressing on the upward way. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I gain Ning every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on. Place. 
y'all are doing this day. We're pressing on the upward way. And Lord, as we continue to press on the upward way, Lord, through our different difficulties and through our challenges and through our ups and downs, Lord, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to plant our feet on higher ground, Lord. Father God, we come to you, Lord, giving you thanks, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord for Lord, that upward call, call, Lord. Lord, we know, Lord, that this world is not our home, and Lord, that we got a place in, in, in glory, Lord, with you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for a reasonable portion of health, Lord. Lord, enough to come out to your place of worship one more time, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the mindset and the mentality to come out to your place of worship, Lord. Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings that you have given us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us through another week, Lord. And now we come, Lord, into to the beginning of a new week, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will be beside us and you will continue to walk with us as we venture on into this week, Lord. Lord, please touch us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to make the right decisions, Lord. Lord, please touch us, you, and please, Lord, help us to speak, Lord, when you need us to speak, Lord. Lord, because, Lord, there's our, there are other people out there, Lord, who, want to, who need to know about you, Lord, about your salvation, about your grace, about your mercy, Lord, and about your love, Lord. Your, your love, Lord, that, that goes beyond what, what we can even think or imagine, Lord. Lord, your love, Lord, that was here from the beginning and will continue to be here until forevermore, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those who are not able to come out to your place of worship, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will please touch them, Lord, with whatever is the reason why, Lord. They are not here today. Please touch them, Lord. Lord, those who are sick and those who, who are shut in, Lord, and, and inside their homes and not able to come out, Lord. Those who are dealing with with COVID, Lord, those who are dealing with high blood pressure, Lord, those who are dealing with other Ill illnesses, Lord, that, that it may be keeping them, cancer, Lord, anything that may be keeping them from your place of worship, Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that you, for them, Lord, that you please place your hands upon them, Lord, and Lord, that you heal them, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for those who aren't able to come, Lord, because they may be in a nursing home somewhere, Lord. Lord, we, we, we pray for those who may not able to be able to come because they're in the, a prison somewhere, Lord. Lord, we pray. We know, Lord, that you can speak to us. And it doesn't matter where we are, Lord. All we have to do is call out on, to you, Lord, and you hear our prayer, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that promise that you hear our prayer, Lord. Lord, we, we pray for, um, we pray, Lord, for the, the, these United States of America. And we pray for the government officials, those who make decisions, Lord, not just in the United States, but in the, in the, in the states, Lord, as well, and in, the, and in the local areas as well, Lord. Everybody who come together and make decisions for, the, for the, what's best for us, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would continue to give them wisdom. We give them wisdom, Lord, and lead and guide them in the right direction, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, for the families of the soldiers, Lord, who lost their lives this week, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort them, Lord, please. And Lord, we, we pray for all those who are wounded or, and, and hurt, Lord, and those who are, there's just so much going on, Lord, and we need you, Lord. Lord, we pray that we, we won't forget that we need you, Lord, and we, we won't forget to lean and depend on you, Lord, in our different situations that we, we may find ourselves going through, Lord. Lord, so we, we, we count on you, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, for a blessed service, Lord. Continue to speak to us, continue to speak through us, Lord. And bless each and every one in here this morning. We pray, Lord, that they will not leave here the same, Lord. But they will have something, Lord, that they would take back with them that, that is a little different from when they came, Lord. And Lord, we place that in your hands. We love you, Lord. 
And these we ask in your son Jesus Christ's name. Let us all say, Amen. We ask now that someone will please lead us in a selection. Scripture lesson will be coming from Psalm. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is the law of the Lord. 
and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaves shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The, uh, the ungodly are not so, but he is like a shaft, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall stand in judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The word of God to the children of God. Amen. 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 Just a few reminders. First, are there any announcements from anyone in the congregation? All right, just a few reminders. Um, the September the 9th through the 12th is the Columbia Annual Conference. September the 9th through the 12th is Columbia Annual Conference. Um, I will try my best to keep y'all updated to when certain services start so you can, if you are not there in person, you can definitely join us in worship, live worship, either Facebook Live or um, YouTube Live. So that's September the 9th through the 12th. And that is all the announcements that I have that also makes that, um, I got my time in my calendar right next. Next Sunday will be um, the final Sunday in the conference year. So September 9th through the 12th will be annual conference. If you have your offerings and you have not given yet, um, please do so as you leave the sanctuary. It's located in, um, offering pan is located in the back. Let us bless the offering. <coughs> Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we are able to give back that which you have given to us. And Lord, and that you still continue to supply all of our needs, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, that what we have given, Lord, would, would be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Lord so that we can go out and, and tell others about you, Lord, and bring others to Christ. So bless this offering, bless the hands that give it, and bless those who will receive it, Lord. Please be asking your son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now we're ready to hear a sermonic selection as we Prepare ourselves to hear word from the Lord. Amen. I'm gonna serve Thank you. 
Lord, we come to you today once more. Praying, Lord, that as your word go forth, Lord, that it would touch hearts, minds, and souls, Lord. As your word go forth, Lord, that it will not return void. As your word go forth, Lord, it will change lives. As your word go forth, Lord, it would, it would do, Lord, what it, you expect it to do, Lord. So, Lord, let the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. You are our strength and our redeemer. These we ask in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. First John, just one simple verse. First John, the fourth chapter, verse eight. First John, the fourth chapter, verse eight. And it says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. It's that simple. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God is love. After a full day at work, sure it's not just me, but the whole staff on the job, we're, we're tired, ready to go. But of course, you know, there's still, still those children who are lingering around. And for me, after I've dealt with a day dealing with staff and children, um, both of them have a tendency to can be off, off the chain sometimes. Sometimes I feel relieved to be able to just leave. And as I'm getting ready to leave out of the door, I hear a small voice say, all right, love you. <laughs> like, a, like a little old woman, like just, all right, love you. And it would make me smile, make me laugh. This small voice would come from a, a two-year-old, one of my two year, the two-year-olds. And even if she um, was the one giving us a hard time throughout this day, a rough time throughout this day, she would still say, love you, as we leave out the door. This little one is being raised by an older couple whom she, that's probably where she heard that from. And she probably picked it up from them, that small phrase, all right now, love you. All right, Miss Crystal, love you. And I can almost be certain that if she was a child that was scolded or disciplined um, right before I walked out the door, if it was me, she would probably not say that to me. She would probably not say that to me. Instead, she would be sitting down on the carpet somewhere with her arms folded and pouting, looking upset at me. We use the word love very loosely at times. Anytime you get that warm, fuzzy feeling, you know, out of our gut, we call it love. We say things like, I love him, or I love her, or I love fried chicken. I love cheesecake. I love sweet tea. I don't understand how we can put people on the same pedestal as food. Then we say, I love this superstar. And I love that superstar. People whom we probably never met before say we love them. But I can guarantee you, just like that child, that love probably is, un it probably has conditions. It's, it's probably conditional. I've heard couples who, 
who love each other say they fall out of love. I've heard people say, I heard people say that they once was in love. You, but you know, these, these people that we claim we love, you can say that you love them, but as soon as they hurt you, you want to take that back. You can say that you love on them, but as soon as they do something that you do, you do not like, we want to take that back. We don't love them anymore. You can say you love fried chicken until you taste the wrong batch. You can say you love cheesecake until you eat too much of it and you just get sick of it. You say you love a superstar until you find out some dirt on them. You say you love the other superstar until you just grow out of it. And we as humans can, we, we, we seem to grow, we say stuff like we grow out of it, we grow out of love, we, 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 we find love and then we fall in love and we fall out of love. We once was in love, we grew to love, we hate to love, we love to hate. Say all kinds of stuff like that. But how about this God that I know and the God that I serve who promises that he would always love us. And that's unconditional. He promises to always love us. He's not like that child who all of a sudden say, I don't like you anymore. I know one child like that. I don't like you anymore because you did something to, to hurt him or you did something to hurt her. But we have this God who's different, who promises to love us always. The first fact that you need to know about this God who loves you always is that first, he is love. He is love. First John, the fourth chapter, verse starting at verse seven, says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him in this love. Not that we have loved God, but that he had loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins, beloved. If God so love us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is made perfect in us. God commands us. He commands that we who are born of him, born of God, must love one another. It's the first thing in that, that we see in, in, in those verses. And he says, if you do not love your fellow brother or sister, you obviously do not know God. Why? Because God is love. He is love. When nothing else existed, when only there was God, there was love. There was love. There was love among the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They love one another. The Father loved the Son. The Son loved the Holy Spirit. The Father loved the Holy Spirit. The Son loved the Father. The Holy Spirit loved the Son. It can go on and on. The Holy Spirit loved the Father. Therefore, if you hear of any other definition of love, I don't care what the definition of love is to you. You have to start first with God because God is love. All those other definitions come next, but God is love. 
And then I want to look at 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 19. It says, we love because he first loved us. You see, it's nothing that we could have done. And it's nothing that we could have said to make God love us. Nothing that you could have done, nothing that you could have said to make God love us. And that's why we say, often say when it's time to come to the altar, we say, come as you are. Because God loves you just the way you are. You need to come and allow him to work on you. Come just as you are because he loves you right then. Don't wait to get it right. He loves you just as you are. So we love because he first loved us. And Romans, the fifth chapter, verse eight, says, but God demonstrated his own love to us in this. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That mm -hmm. further pushes the point. We can sit here and feel guilty. We can sit here and feel bad. We can sit here and feel like, like dirt. We can feel just filthy because of some of the things we, we have done. But God still loves us. Even when we were in our sins, even when we were wallowing in our own sins, God still loved us. There's a verse in the Bible that speaks about um, God loving on Israel, even when they were wallowing in their own blood. God, God loves on them, tell them to get up, live. Even while we were in our own sins, God loves us. He loves us first. And then Isaiah the 54th chapter, verse 10. The mountains may shift, the hills may be shaken, but my faithful love won't shift from you. My covenant of peace won't be shaken, says the Lord, the one who pities you. So it doesn't matter what goes on around you. It doesn't matter what goes on with the, in the world. His love for you will never change. His love for you will never change. Doesn't matter how you feel, and you might feel distance at one time. That might feel as though God is distant from me. God still loves you the same. You might feel at, at, at one time that God loves you even more. Oh, God still loves you the same. And not only does He love you, but He loves those around you. Psalm 86, verse 15. But you, my Lord, are the God of compassion and mercy. You are very patient. And full of love. Many of us are not very patient. Many of us are very short on patience. But God is patient with us. He's patient with us. And he loves us. Even when he sees the things that we do. Ephesians, the third chapter, verse 18 through 19 says, I ask that you have the power to, to grasp love's width length, height, and depth, together with all believers. I ask that you will know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge, so that you will be filled entirely with the fullness of God. God's love for us is beyond what we can think. God loves for us. We won't even understand it until we cross over on, on the other side. God's love for us is just beyond our understanding. Ephesians first chapter, verses 5 and 6, that God destined us to be adopted children through Christ Jesus because of his love, which is according to his goodwill and plan and the honor of his glory, grace that he has given us freely through the son whom he loves. We are adopted. When you adopt a child, that's different from when you foster a child. When you adopt a child, that's your, you are that, that, that the, you are that their child. It's pretty much like they birthed you. They're going to take care of you like that. They're going to love you like that. And God has adopted us. And he, he's going to take care of us like that. That's just the, the love of God that he, that he has for us. He thought enough to adopt us and bring us to his own. 
And then one of my favorite verses, Revelation 21st chapter, verse four. It says, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, anything more, anymore. For the former things have passed away. You might say, what does that have to do with love? That has a lot to do with love. Because on this earth, we, we, we are going to have pain. On this earth, we're going to have tears falling from our eyes. On this earth, we're going to experience death, and we're going to experience the death of loved ones. Ooh. But there will come a day when he will bring us all to him and he's going to love on us. And he's going to wipe those tears from your eyes. And, and there will be no more death. There will be no more mourning or crying or pain. Any, any of that, there will be no more. And the things that we experience in this world will, will be wiped away. It will pass away. And we will experience God's love forever. And lastly, another one of my favorite verses, a couple of verses, Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 35 to 39. Mentioned it a few Sundays ago. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As, is it, as, as it is written, for the sake we have been killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor present, things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, the Lord. So what does that tell you? It tells you that God's love lasts always. God's love will last through anything that may come your way. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Death will not separate you from the love of God. Ooh. And when we think about death, we think about the end. Oh, that cannot, it still won't separate you from the love of God. Life will not separate you from the love of God. There's no angels or spirits or anything that can separate you. We give the devil credit for a lot of stuff, but he still can't separate us from the love of God. It says powers, things present or things to come. We don't know our future. We don't know what is to come, but it won't separate us from the love of God. It says height, nor depth. You can go way up high. Nothing can separate you. Think about the people in the space station. God still loved them up there. You can go down low into the trenches of the ocean. God's love is still there. No one, nothing can separate us from Christ Jesus, our Lord. So though we might have this mentality where we can fall out of love, we no longer love, and people can hurt us to a point where we don't love them anymore. God's love is everlasting. And God's love will continue to be with you everywhere you go, anywhere you go, life or death, God's love is there. There's a, a song, my voice is not the best today, definitely not. But I'm reminded of this song, especially when I hear these Bible verses and it says, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. And that's the refrain. There is a name I love to hear. 
I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, oh how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. We certainly lift up Brother Bowers and his family, especially as they prepare to bury their loved ones. Any other prayer requests? Let us look to the Lord. Lord, we come to you with humble hearts. Come to you knowing, Lord, that you love us. And that there is nothing that we could have done to deserve your love. As so much as we work nothing we could have done to deserve your love. As much as we come to church, Lord, it's nothing we could have done to deserve your love. As much as we try to do the right thing, Lord, you still loved us in spite of it. We thank you, Lord, because you are love. You demonstrated love, Lord, among yourself, Lord. And you demonstrated love, Lord, on us. That while we were yet sinners, you sent your only begotten Son. To die. You had it in plan already what you were going to do, Lord. Even when you knew what we were going to do, you had it in plan, Lord, that you would send your son to suffer, bleed, and die for us and resurrect just for us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for that, Lord. So, Lord, as we you pour your love out on us, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would 
show us how to pour our love out on others as well, Lord. Lord, even when it's hard, when it seems hard to love, Lord, show us love, Lord, what it means to love. Lord, because when we feel your love, Lord, we can't help but to reflect it out on other people as, as well, Lord. So, Lord, we lift up, Lord, these families because we love them, Lord. But most of all, we know that you love them best. So we lift up the Bowers family and the Williams family. Lord, we, we, we don't even need to stop there, Lord. We lift up our, our individual families, Lord, and our different dynamics that we have going on in our families, Lord. Lord, we, we, we lift up those who are grieving at this time, Lord. We lift up those who are hurting at this time, Lord. We lift up those who, who are confused at this time. Lord, somebody has lost a loved one and they don't know what to do, Lord. Lord, someone has lost a loved one and they, they feel, Lord, that maybe you don't love them. Lord, your love is never ending. So we ask that you please touch them. We ask that you please comfort them and, and bless them in a special way, Lord. Lord, may they feel the warmth of your love. And Lord, as they, they get about their beds, Lord, your love is there. As they drive down the highway your love is there as they seek lord to escape and go vacate have a vacation lord your love is still wherever they go lord that person is who is on the brink lord we know that you your love is with them lord let your love shine forth, even in the midst of troubles, trials, tribulations, crying, mourning. May your love show forth, Lord. Lord, please touch our families. Lord, we have some in our families that know you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving on them. Lord, we have some in our families, Lord, who don't care to even know right now about you, Lord. But thank you, Lord, for still loving on them. Lord, we have those in our family who has once loved you, but has backslidden. Lord, love on them. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that that they would, Lord, feel that love, Lord, and be drawn towards you, Lord. So we lift up each and every one of our family members, Lord, knowing that in spite of what's going on in this world around us, Lord, you can touch us and fill us with your love. Lord, even you can start from there, and Lord, that the world will see just from us, Lord, the love of God. So, Lord, we ask that you will please, as you love on us, help us to love on others as well and make a change in this world. Thank you, Lord. You are an awesome God. You have demonstrated, Lord, that you can do things that we that seem impossible to us, Lord. But you are a mighty God. So anything that we may be going through, Lord, we give it to you, Lord. And knowing that you, the loving Father, will take care of it. 
Lord, that as we bear this, this, this yoke of life, Lord, we know that you are on the other side, Lord, helping us as we push through this life, Lord. Until that day, Lord, where we can see you. Until that day, Lord, where we can, we can live forever in your love. That we won't need the, the sun to ask you in. But the, your love, Lord, will be, the, will be shining through, Lord. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that this, this word, Lord, will go with us as we leave this place. And as we see people, Lord, that, that needs to hear about this love, that we can share it, Lord. So now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. Let us all sing together. Amen. Amen. Thank you.